Um, thank you all. I'm so honored to be here and, and accept this incredible award. And um, this is such a powerful room. I'm just blown away by the awardees before me and all the work that um, you all have done. Um, I want to be like you guys when I grow up. You just did incredible work, and thank you to each of you um, for all of your work. Um, and thanks to everyone who came on my behalf, too. I appreciate y'all. Um, I think that SILSA is an incredible department, um, an incredible sort of hub at St. Mary's um, because of the important work that y'all are doing um, to help build a deeper understanding for students of their privilege. Um, of their uh, educational privilege specifically and engage them um, in the struggles of our time and of our world beyond our campus and also be um, a meaningful part of the work toward justice and toward change. And that when I think of SILSA, that's really how, um, I think that's the spirit that you all embody and I'm just so blessed to be a part of that and to be accepting an award coming from um, this department. Um, I did not read the prompt closely about head, heart, and hand, um, so hopefully I, I um, am on agenda. Um, but I did want to start by saying that I take, um, I take St. Mary's motto of entering to learn and leaving to serve very seriously. Um, and sometimes I take it as more of a commandment than a motto, um, which is good and bad. But I do really believe that it is our duty um, and uh, to use our privilege, to use um, our gifts, to use our resources towards justice, um, especially for those who, as Ryan mentioned, are at the margins, um, who are suffering um, under some of the, our systems um, and are experiencing oppression specifically. Um, I think it's incredibly important that we empower the most vulnerable um, and the most impacted to fight for their own liberation and at the forefront of their own liberation. So after graduating from St. Mary's in 2006, I joined Lasallian Volunteers. Does everyone know what that is? The volunteer program that St. Mary's is connected to. Um, and I was placed in Camden, New Jersey, um, teaching all boys middle school. And if any of you all have had a middle schooler in your life, or have a middle schooler, you know all that that takes, the incredible patient. Yes, you, okay? <laughs> oh, middle yeah, yeah. school too. Just the incredible patience that it takes, um, and sometimes a prayer and a miracle too. Um, and San Miguel School, where I taught, was a, a beloved, very small but beloved institution of the community because it really um, created educational opportunities for black and Latino youth. Um, who were not having those opportunities in the public school system because the public school system had been uh, severely disinvested in over the years. Um, Camden used to be headquarters to the Campbell Soup Company. Um, folks are nodding. Um, they had robust maritime um, and manufacturing industries, and all of those industries fled, um, and Camden experienced blight, unemployment, um, uh, disinvestment in, in education and in community services and generations um, and new residents were, and new immigrants um, were suffering from that. Um, and while I was teaching there, I realized that so much of what was going on for my students inside the classroom had nothing to do with the classroom, right? It was um, all that was happening outside um, of the classroom and outside of our walls. The uh, students' parents were working two and three jobs out of town to make ends meet. Um, they were living in renting and renting um, rundown and sometimes unsafe and unhealthy homes. Um, and the street economy was really their best opportunity and sometimes their only opportunity to survive um, for both my kids and for their family members and older siblings. So it was at that time that while I love and respect and appreciate teachers, I felt that my calling was to do something to address those systemic and root causes um, of what my students were experiencing and what was impacting the families in Camden. So over the last five years, as Ryan mentioned, I've been in Oakland working on policy um, that raises wages for the lowest wage workers and ensures job access um, and opportunities for those who've been locked out of our system. Um, and through this work, I met a wonderful um, man by the name of John Jones, who when we met, he was a security guard at Burger King in downtown Oakland, and he had recently been released from prison um, and was trying to raise a young son and one on the way on a minimum wage job working as a security guard. 
Um, and so like many of our returning citizens coming out of prison or the criminal justice system, he was still paying for his mistakes through employer discrimination and being locked out from the opportunity to get a good job and take care of his family. Um, and he joined a campaign that we were leading at the time to raise the minimum wage in Oakland and became an incredible, incredibly powerful spokesperson. Um, he would publicly speak on the impossible choices that he was forced to make as a minimum wage worker. I remember a powerful story where he talked about the choice between putting a, a blanket on his bed or putting that same blanket on the window to cover up the draft from outside because he couldn't afford curtains. Um, and John organized his neighbors. He organized other low-wage workers in Oakland. He spoke out to the media. He lobbied elected officials until we successfully raised Oakland's minimum wage to twelve twenty-five with paid sick time in 2014. Um, which we're very proud of, and it has spread um, to other cities in the Bay. So through my work with him and in Oakland, um, I've really deepened my analysis to understand that it's not simply enough to give charity or to do a single service project, or even to dedicate an entire career to policy change, but that the work that we do must be about empowering those who are impacted to lead at the forefront for the fight for justice and for their own liberation. So that's, um, that's where I come from when I try to do the work. Um, and that's what um, Enter to Learn and Leave to Serve means for me. It means restoring dignity, um, restoring humanity, and empowering people and giving them the tools um, to be successful and have enough agency to make different choices in their lives and determine their own future. Um, and by the way, John actually um, now works at a nonprofit doing uh, anti mass incarceration work and ending the school to prison pipeline. Um, and his kids are doing great. Um, and I'm just really inspired by the folks that I work with, including the folks that I brought here tonight. And so I do want to just quickly give them each individually a shout out. So, Beth, if you can stand up, Beth works with me at eBase. She is our communications director. My uncle Matt is here. He's also my godfather. He does um, worker justice work uh, in the North Bay. Uh, my best friend Malila is here. She's also a Gale, class of 2014. <laughs> um, she does work uh, with um, workforce development for youth. Luke Johnson, class of 2009, Gale, um, works with, um, with uh, incarcerated in San Quentin. And Karen Gale, class of 2015. Um, and Karen and I met organizing uh, food service workers here at St. Mary's into a contract. So I just want to thank all of them for coming, and I'm so honored to be with all of you tonight. Thank you. Thank you.